Welcome back to the Atari ST Nostalgia GFA Basic Tour. Now in the previous video we got familiar with uh, conditional code execution by using if, else and else if. In this video we will add the same code to get some user inputs instead of uh, setting the variables uh, right directly in the code. And uh, after adding to this code we also will look at some other ways to use the input command uh, to, get user, uh, to, to make the code uh, use some user input. So let's go straight to our code. Uh, this is the code that we are were actually using uh, before and hang on let me yes I reset the counter to zero sorry um, there was no need to do that actually but the part I want to change so this this program is working we know that but uh, I'm setting the numbers right in the code and I already complained about it that this is not the right way to do it uh, so what I need to do is use an input uh, command and the way to do this is I can actually just add to this line input is the commands I can put the question within quotation marks or it should be um, I can just say give me give me a number and then add a space so the text only and then add a comma and remove this one so what I did is is I used the input command I will tell the input command to display this text on the screen and then um, it will wait for my input i can type something and whatever i type uh, it will actually set uh, it will actually write to this very vari this variable uh, number one percent i will do the same uh, for this one uh, uh, i will oh hang on number and this one I will do slightly different and see. All right, so I've now put two input commands. Um, they are almost the same. Uh, there's one difference between the two. The first one, what I did, I said just give me a number and I put a comma here and let it write. The second one is uh, different uh, because I made some typos when I uh, just corrected. It basically say, okay, can you give me another number, uh, which is a question. And instead of a comma, I use a semicolon. And what a semicolon will do is it will take this text, but it will actually add a question mark and then a space. And then it will wait for input. And whatever I put there, uh, I will, uh, it will be set as number two. And of course, the rest of the program will remain unchanged. And testing the code seems to work. So now it will ask me uh, a number. So this is like, give me a number. I will say, let's do 10. And see, can you give me another number? Uh, the input command actually put the quotation mark in the space there, as you can see. And I will say, like, nah, let's do 55. And then, okay. It will execute the rest of the code saying, like, this are your two numbers. Multiplying gives 550. And because it's between, uh, it's larger than 100 and it's also not bigger than 1000, it will say just another day's work. And it actually ended the program. And uh, let's run again. Let's do some really big numbers because that's what I like. This is actually too big because it says an integer. Uh, it should between it should be between these values. So that's also interesting. Integer has a specific range between minus, well, really big and uh, plus really big. But if I multiply these two numbers together, it actually gets bigger. So it says no, no, this number is out of range. You cannot use this. Uh, of course, what you can do is, uh, yeah, I just ignore this. Uh, but let's keep it a bit, a bit smaller, just to see that the code still works. And see this multiplication, it can still do. Now, if you want, to, if you want to work with bigger numbers, you can use something else than an integer. You can use, I think, a real value. Um, I will not do that because this is supposed to be really, really basic. Just the basic commands are used and to encourage people to use the basic commands to do some coding themselves um, but as you can see what we did we added two user input commands to this code um, now there's other ways to you can actually use uh, input commands uh, i will just i have a, a copy of this program saved anyway so in this case i will just kill this program because i want to uh, show you uh, two different ways to make uh, to use input um, because suppose I have a really, a really annoying program um, that says uh, it pauses for half a second. 
and then it says I like to repeat myself dot 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 and then it will it will pause another time and then the program will run again now this 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 looks like an annoying program um, and, and it is because all it does is this it clears the screen, waits, then says, I like to repeat myself, and after one and a half seconds, it will sort of run itself again. And I have to use the key combination to break the program, which is uh, Control, Alt, and Shift in GFR Basic, and say, okay, let, let's stop this, because I want to have some key combination to, to escape this program. And um, what, what you do uh, is you use the in key string, um, I will type the command first and then I will uh, uh, equals 32 and I will use another if statement uh, and then I say okay uh, clear the screen uh, print okay I will stop okay I will stop this uh, uh, and then I will add another uh, empty uh, empty uh, line, and I will say print press any key to exit. Uh, and I will use another command. And uh, I should not make two. And I say. And so let me explain this code. These are two inputs that that's, um, in many programs you might want to use, uh, especially if you make some loop and you want to have some key to escape the loop. Um, in this case, this, this part of the program is the same. So what I, and I actually made a mistake. I should, um, I should actually end my if statement so. Is this now correct? Yeah, this should be correct. Okay. Uh, what I did is, is I tell it to, uh, after this pause, it will check the in key string. And the in key string is basically the keyboard buffer. What happens if code is running and it's unable to actually take the input from the user? Uh, any keystroke I made will be put in a keyboard buffer. And this command uh, will actually check the keyboard buffer, uh, the position of the keyboard buffer, if, it's, uh, if it finds a character with the ASCII code number 32, which is the spacebar. Um, if it does, um, if it does not, if so, if it didn't press anything, it will just skip all this code and if and will, it will go back to the run. So it will just keep repeating itself all the time. But if at some point I have pressed the spacebar, um, so it will not wait. It just uh, it will just execute code. But if at this line, if at some point I press the spacebar, it will clear the screen. It will say, okay, I will stop this and says press any key to exit. And um, so if you want to have a press any key to exit input, this is the command you use, void input2. Um, input2 basically means get any input, doesn't matter what. Um, and the void command basically says, use this next command, but do not process any of the input. You don't even have to take a variable or write a value to it. It's just, um, it, it does nothing more than that. And now, I didn't figure this out myself. I know I used this command also when I was a child. Um, this is something, this and this, is, is stuff you can find in the manual, like how do I do this? Um, and basically, um, this will allow me to, to break this loop. Um, for instance, if I run the program, this will just keep running. Uh, if I press any key, it still will keep running. However, if I press the space bar, now it says, okay, I will stop this, press any key to exit. Now the void imp2, this one will actually wait for me. I press a key and then the program will end. And note that it, it didn't matter at which point I press the space bar. It's just at any point, it can be anywhere in the code. Um, it's just when it gets to this line, that's when it will actually read the keyboard buffer and it will read if a space bar press was here. So yeah, that this is our, these are two functions you will of two commands you will might uh, want to use quite a lot. As you can see, I pressed the spacebar earlier, but it will still process the entire code, including the very long or the one and a half second pause. 
and then it will execute the uh, the code based on the condition that is found the spacebar press. Then I press a key to exit, and then I have exited the program. So we are now familiar uh, how to use user input in some various ways. Uh, actually, the, the the few ways that are used very uh, by far the most. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and in the next video we will have a quick look at how we can actually structure our code using procedures and code folding. So, because I, as you can see, I'm getting a bit more lines in the code, and it's, it's already it's it's difficult to actually yeah to see because there's so many commands and it's only one page. So imagine having pages of code and you have to go through it. It gets hard to find stuff. That is something we will look at in the next video. So I hope I will see you then.